Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, as you can see, I'm gonna be in the statically animated avatar today. I'm just gonna be like this the whole video, alright? Uh, you know, I just felt like I didn't want to spend three hours editing on 30 seconds of video this time. Just this time. I I'm gonna go back eventually, just like, just for this video, I'm gonna stay like this, if that's okay. Alright? Okay, alright, okay, S start the video. That's right, we're talking about the, the boys, boys today. The Boys is a show about boys and what boys get up to on their daily activities. And if you have a show about boys, like The Boys very much is, you'll have a show with an intimate relationship with masculinity. And The Boys has no shortage of male characters, each with their own connections to masculinity. I mean, The Boys has a lot to say about a lot of things, and any analysis of messages and metaphors of the show will barely scratch the surface. But I've found that this topic is something that not a lot of people are talking about. And it's something pretty interwoven with the show, specifically in its third season, with the introduction of Soldier Boy. So I'm not a pussy. Like I said before, The Boys has got a lot of boys in it, and it's time someone starts talking about these boys in the true language of boys. Oh, and also there's like superheroes or whatever. Delicious! Massive spoilers for, like, the entirety of The Boys. Like, really, this video expects you to go into it with full knowledge of The Boys. Don't spoil this amazing show for, like, a C-rate YouTube video, please. Go watch it. Okay? Okay. There are six main male characters in The Boys that I want to go over here, and they all vary in how masculine they really are. So I've provided this neat little spectrum to put them all on, ranking them in how masculine, how strong and big a boys they are. Uh, we'll start off with the least masculine person here, Huey. Huey is defined by his less than imposing nature. He's an underdog, meek, nervous, generally inexperienced, not strong, but gets through everything with a heart of gold and an iron will brought on by the injustices of the world. He's the self-insert for every white guy that was bullied in high school. It's safe to say that Huey is the least masculine man in the show. I mean, it's obvious from the word go. In the beginning, he's the audience surrogate, experiencing events in the show as we do, shocked, confused, and in awe of all the crazy shit. We see him constantly put in situations where he is powerless, reliant on others, powerless, out of place, scared. Did I mention powerless? But he finds ways to be useful, in niche scenarios as well as emotional support and also being human. And if we look at Huey's attributes on their own, that's most people. Most people feel inexperienced, powerless, out of place, and scared. Nobody is a superhero in real life. In a show about superhumans, Huey is the most human character, the most grounded. And I find it interesting that the most grounded man in the whole show is by far the least masculine. The most normal, relatable everyman is constantly emasculated, constantly ripped away from being the kind of man that he should be. When it comes to what is a man or what makes a man, I'm not just going to explain that all at once. I'm going to be building our definition of masculinity as the video progresses through these pillars. And the first kind of pillar of masculinity that I want to put up is... <clears throat> pure masculinity is inherently unrealistic. No man on earth is truly masculine. Every man has cried, every man has failed to be capable in a situation that required it, every man has pooped his pants in third period and now you have to go out of class and everyone's laughing at you and you have to go to the principal's office and get new pants. We've all done it. Uh, every man has done things that would get his man card revoked. And Huey represents how most regular people are not even close to that ideal of masculinity. And for the longest time, that doesn't bother him. He goes about his normal business in the show, struggling, underground fighting, getting small victories, succeeding through whatever means possible along with his gang. I mean, he admits it out loud to Starlight in the beginning. It doesn't matter to him that she's a powerhouse and he's a soft little twink boy. He doesn't have to be a big, strong, manly man. He's just Huey, and that's enough. But in season three, Huey gets a bit of a bomb dropped on him. 
This video is mostly going to be focused on season 3, because that's where the deepest connections to masculinity lie, in my opinion. So, at the beginning of season 3, Huey is at the best place he's been in a while. He's confident, competent, working to help people in meaningful ways, and all of that is through his job working with AOC. Victoria Newman. Everything's going great for this guy, but then he learns she's actually a crazy murderer superhero who blows up people's heads, and he's just been working under a soup's foot this whole time and feeding her all of the information she wants and basically allowing her to continue her unjust success. This pretty much undermines all of the good that Huey has done, at least in his mind. It shatters this healthy and constructive space Huey has had for the last year. He almost immediately goes to Butcher and tells him. This event is the catalyst for everything Huey does for the rest of the season. I mean, Huey has seen a lot of people get murdered, but this one is something special. Huey has undergone a transformation in the last two seasons, where he began as this insignificant little mud boy, powerless to stop superheroes from upending his whole life, to a man that can help and stop superheroes in their unjust actions. This reveal, in his eyes, brings him back to the beginning. It yanks him from a place where he's competent and significant, to a place where he is doubtful and comparatively useless. Huey can't physically fight superheroes, and now the only other way he has to fight soups has been built off a lie, and a lie that has allowed even more people to die. And this is what drives him to do what he does in Season 3. Side with Butcher, fuck over MM, help Soldier Boy. He does these things because these are what gets him closest to feeling like that man again. That man that is capable and strong and helpful. And that, I feel, is the major tension regarding Huey's masculinity. Each of the characters I'm going to talk about have certain pieces of masculinity that they lack in particular, and the two that Huey have are capability and strength. I know these two look like the same thing, but, but they're not, I promise. One's mental and one's physical. Capability is more like confidence and strength is more like power. So Huey is now taken out of this healthy, constructive place where he's confident and all that to a place where he is just the opposite in all of his history there. Huey with the boys is meager, out of place, and it's just the weakest of the crew. At least, that's how he sees it, even with all the positive affirmation around him. His lack of confidence is just telling him how much less of a man he sees himself in this environment. So here, Huey is now in an environment where him and his masculinity are constantly undermined and invalidated, where his confidence is destroyed and where he has no power. But this could all be changed with the introduction of Temp V. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick break from Huey since I would rather talk about guys without superpowers before I talk about guys with superpowers since having them or not is a pretty big point of emasculation. So let's move on to our next least masculine boy, Frenchie. So Frenchie is a guy, and not the most masculine one at that. He's a sly man, many identities, knowledgeable in many fields. Specifically, he's a remarkable chemist and engineer. He's effectively the smart guy of the crew. Again, none of this is particularly masculine, the smart one doesn't really need to fill that role. Frenchie has a lot of emasculating things in his character. He isn't really strong, he's named after a French bulldog, he is surrounded by women who are way more powerful than him, and he has this weird dominatrix thing going on with this lady. Uh, but to be honest, Frenchie doesn't really struggle with that. With his stature, his niche, or the women in his life, he doesn't care about that. But what he does struggle with, and this is something that every male character in the show will struggle with, is in his relationship with his father. Father-son relationships. The boys has a lot of them. And our introduction to this will be Frenchie. His father was bipolar and abusive. Tried to smother him to death, forced him to kneel in shards of broken glass he dropped. Terrible stuff. Those horrible experiences as a kid are likely what led him to such an underground life wrought with murder, trauma, and gun running. And here, I would like to set up a second pillar of masculinity about fathers. <clears throat> Your father is right. What I mean by that is, from the view of masculinity, father-son relationships boil down to the father needs to turn his son into a man. That is all. The father sets the standards for his son, consciously or unconsciously, and the son then spends the rest of his life chasing them. Frenchie is, most of the time, put into a submissive role in the show. 
whether it be to Butcher, Little Nina, Grace Mallory, hell, Sherry, he takes orders from a lot of people. And his early relationship with his father is what causes this. He says it himself. My papa, he put a chain around my neck and all that fucking changes is who holds the other end. His experiences with his father hold him back. He describes it as a chain. His memories of his childhood and father keep him locked in one place. His standards for life have been set. It's so easy for him to be someone's attack dog or toolkit. It's just him going back to the world his father created for him. And every relationship I mentioned before satisfies Frenchie in his pursuit of his father's standards. Notice how I didn't mention Kimiko. Kimiko is different to Frenchie. Kimiko is the only person in Frenchie's life who is intimate, but doesn't order him, doesn't rely on him to get things done or do her bidding. I mean, she doesn't have to, she's a soup. And where other people would get uncomfortable with having someone so close to them be so much more powerful than them, Frenchie welcomes it. Again, it's the standard his father set for him. Kimiko and Frenchie's relationship is familiar to Frenchie, but it challenges the standard set by his father, who, according to masculinity, is right. What drives Frenchie to Kimiko initially is that he thinks they're the same. Traumatized attack dogs with violent homes. There's something about Kimiko that resonates with Frenchie's past, but in a way where his emotional side is just able to run free where otherwise it wouldn't be able to. They both see in each other someone who is not defined by what their environment has given them. And it's these emotions and weakness, unmasculine things that allows Frenchie and Kimiko to cultivate this relationship. And in the end, it's Frenchie's unmasculine traits that allow him to overcome the standards built by his father. They help him become more than just a chained dog, and they help him get his damn paid vacation days in a dental plan! M.M. is a big guy. He is experienced, confident, powerful in his own right, strong-willed, and a natural leader. He's the first guy to go telling Butcher off when he starts going off the deep end. M.M. doesn't have any problems with his masculinity on the outside. His big problems with masculinity lie inside, with trauma and control. M.M.'s grandfather was killed by a reckless and uncaring soldier boy on a killing spree in a black neighborhood. M.M. blames himself for the death of his grandfather, as he was the one who unknowingly moved his grandfather into danger. Pretty much directly because of this event, M.M. struggles with OCD. In the earlier seasons, M.M.'s main problems came from his disorder, but in the third season, it's shown that M.M.'s disorder stems from his trauma. Another pillar of masculinity that I want to set up is having strength is less important than never having weaknesses. Trauma is not masculine. Trauma is regressive. Trauma is inherently emotional. Trauma is weakness. M.M. deals with all of this, and his response, if he can't show or get over his trauma, is to try and use it. He checks the burners three times a night, moves papers and utensils to try and keep things in order. He tries to obtain what he didn't have that night, where his grandfather died. Control. The main facet of control that is explored in M.M.'s story is his daughter. He wants to present himself as someone who has control to his daughter more than anyone, and he wants to keep her out of all the shit in his life. This urge is a very masculine sentiment, and it operates under the preset that his daughter will think less of him if she finds out how little power or control he has over this. In season 3, he starts to get obsessive over it. His trauma, and subsequently his OCD, flares up due to the reappearance of Soldier Boy in his life. He's been pushing it away for the past year, but that can only last so long. Trauma is something that always brings you back, forces your mind to regress, and only look at a specific point in your past. So M.M. goes back to Butcher in order to face his trauma head-on, but unfortunately, he ends up putting himself in the perfect position to be caught between all this crap between Butcher, Huey, Soldier Boy, and Homelander. He came here in order to face his trauma, but he is repeatedly shoved down by those around him who M.M. thought would help him. It's just more and more weakness being shown. It seems to only make things worse, he gets even more wrapped up in his OCD. He loses control and punches his daughter's stepfather, although it is pretty fucking justified. Actually, it, can I see that again? <laughs> Thanks. Martin! The only times where we really see him make progress. It's not through beating someone up or finding an epic strength that pulls him through everything. It's when his walls are down around Starlight and his polar opposite, Frenchie. 
That is when he makes progress in his own mind. He's able to discard that masculine wall that he puts around himself. He takes advice from Frenchie and opens himself up to Starlight. Sharing his deep emotions, he no longer forces himself to look away from his trauma and check the burners and rearrange the utensils and straighten the papers because he knows his family isn't just going to sit down and let Soldier Boy kill them. It's hard to do this, and it's made that much harder by the masculine teachings of never show weakness. M.M. gets what he wants, not by obtaining the control that a masculine viewpoint would lead him to, or by powering through his trauma. M.M. finds what he wants by letting his daughter know about his past, and admitting that yes, he has weakness. And his daughter... So we're done going over the powerless people, so let's move on to superheroes. Superpowers in the boys aren't necessarily unique. However, the way the boys explore superpowers in a hyper-realistic, gritty capitalism way is. Superpowers represent the incredible divide between those with power and without it in our systems. People with superpowers can't even be touched by people without them. The show uses superpowers to depict any system with a large power dynamic. Religion, abuse, capitalism, racism, all that. And this includes masculinity. Masculinity, at the end of the day, is about the power dynamic that is supposed to exist between men and women. The entire concept of masculinity revolves around this. Uh, hold on, new pillar. Masculinity revolves around creating, maintaining, and presenting its power dynamic. Masculinity is presentation. You have to present your strength, present your leadership, present your ability, and almost more importantly, you can never present your weaknesses, your emotions, or any shortcomings. Masculinity is honestly more about what you can't do than what you can do, and this presentation line of thinking runs everything having to do with superheroes at Vought. Always look for cameras, smile for the video, charm the congressman, give the people and the shareholders what they want. Heroes have to present themselves in a specific way in order to be perceived as real superheroes. Just like how men have to present themselves in a specific way to be considered real men. And here is where we get back to Huey. Huey's relationship with Supes is complicated. He fully understands both ends of the scale of feeling toward them. He's had his life completely upended by them, but he also understands that they're people and he's formed positive relationships with them. In all of the show, Huey is smart enough to understand the complex situations surrounding the power dynamics of superheroes and regular people, and he can handle it all with maturity. But then, Temp V is right there. I want to try something. I have to do this, all right? You don't. And he's in just as much danger. Homelander almost lasered me in half in front of her. Another avenue of Huey's masculinity that the show explores is in his relationship with Starlight. It's a core relationship of the show. Any hardship that they face is most of the time centered to what the rest of the show is doing. So Huey's plot struggles go hand in hand with his relationship struggles. Throughout the show, we are shown the intense power dynamic between these two, whether it's through bowling, Starlight literally having his life in her hands, or Maeve insulting him for the fifth time for no reason. Like, why does she hate him so much? Fucking twink! But yes, Huey and Starlight have an abnormal relationship set up. Starlight has all the power. Power. And Huey says early on that he doesn't care, that he's okay with being just Huey. But there's a part of him, deep down, that really, really does care. And it's that same part of him when seeing Starlight and Supersonic together that gets a bit jealous, nervous, uncomfortable, that brews up anger when it gets made fun of by the Russian news. It's his internal masculinity telling him all of this, that he needs to be stronger and bigger and more assertive, and this mixes violently with his masculine insecurities of capability and strength. All of this with the reveal of Newman's identity comes crashing down on him all at once, and he's powerless and useless, and he's back to that sidewalk with nothing but Robin's detached hands and... But now, there's an out. I'm finally gonna start talking about Temp V. Temp V bridges the gap between superheroes and regular humans, allowing anyone to exhibit a superpower for 24 hours with minor side effects. Temp V has a very large effect on Huey. It completely breaks the power dynamic that has been established in the show, and that is natural in Huey's life. It gives Huey a chance to be... more. 
every single problem that Huey is facing, according to masculinity, is solved instantly. He's strong, capable, he can fucking teleport. This is what he needs. The power, the ability, right? The truth is more complicated than that, obviously. Where this stratagem fails is, well one, Tempe is gonna fucking kill him, but two, it's his relationships. This newfound power. Sure, it lets Huey turn into handling a shit Huey, but it also shatters the unique connection that Huey has with the rest of his team. Huey is the heart of the boys. Also, just real quick, leader, lancer, big guy, smart guy, heart. I love overly sarcastic productions, go check them out. Huey is the emotional core of the group. His identity is rooted in enabling other people to do more and fighting against unfair systems. With Temp V, he is suddenly put at the punisher end of the power dynamic that he has been fighting this whole time. This immediately discredits his role in the group to everyone. It's tough to be an emotional core when you just punched a hole in a guy. It's also tough to be an emotional core when you personally are so disoriented that punching a hole in a guy puts you in a state of fucking euphoria. Huey taking Temp V disconnects himself from his constructive relationships with the boys and with Starlight, and it also enables a very harmful side of a particular relationship. So we're going to be taking another break from Huey to talk about Butcher. Butcher is a man of many talents, such as killing, killing, espionage, and killing. Half of his time spent in the show is just him saying, I'll be off, and then coming back with bloodied hands and a new plan of how he's going to shove a hamster up Homelander's ass. Butcher is a very destructive man. The entire story of the boys is built off the back of his revenge story against Homelander, against Soups, and against Vought. And Butcher is also a man of many traumas. His abuse of father, Homelander's actions, and his brother's death are all things that both drive and haunt him. The most aggressive, iron-fisted, morally bankrupt boy in The Boys has the most trauma, the most soft spots. The results of Butcher's trauma are his two main missing masculinity pieces, stability and vengeance. We'll start off with stability. Uh, Butcher's lack of stability can be traced back to his relationship with his father. The best way I can describe Butcher's dad is... A CUNT! He's an abusive, irresponsible, terrible parent, and just an absolute nonce. I talked before about father-son relationships with Frenchie, and how an abusive parent can create a destructive standard and a harmful status quo for their children. Butcher's dad does this to a T. He's never even given Butcher a chance for stability. He just says, life's a bitch, here's some alcohol, kiddo. I mean, he does my job for me right here. Maybe I'll push you a bit hard. Good, yeah. Are you the strongest bastard you know? Yeah. <laughs> Tougher than I ever was. You're a fucking monster. <laughs> Butcher's dad creates a world of violence and strength. And Butcher has been living it up in this world ever since Homelander ruined the life he built. And that's not even the biggest form of trauma stemming from Butcher's home. That award goes to his little brother Lenny. Lenny was a much weaker little brother to Butcher, but someone who always kept Butcher in check, as well as created a form of companionship in the abusive home that they lived in. But that didn't last forever. Lenny left himself after being left alone with their father without Butcher for an extended amount of time, and this haunts Butcher to this day. Butcher blames himself wholly for the death of his brother, and any attempt at blaming his dad is immediately deflected back to Butcher. The reason I stopped talking about Huey to talk about Butcher is because they have a specific relationship. It's the longest running relationship in the show. Butcher watches Huey go from little twat to strong cunt over the course of the entire series. And of course, Huey... Who's this one remind you of? Is he the spitting of Lenny? Huey has a similar role in Butcher's life as Lenny did. He is the emotional core, the rational everyman. Not the strongest, but he can guide and enable people that are. This dynamic, as well as everything else having to do with Huey, gets warped by the use of Temp V. Lenny isn't going to be good at leading Butcher away from doing harm when Lenny is the one kicking the shit out of people on the playground. Huey sees a radical change in how he interacts with the world around him. But Butcher, if we're being honest, is used to this violence and power. He's killed Soups with his bare hands before. 
Laser Eyes is just another means to the same ends he's been chasing. And now, Huey has gained the strength to be equal to Butcher. And what's so bad about two Butchers? Real masculine relationships are unemotional, down-to-earth, simple. You know, the, the boy is cracking up a cold one, simple action, simple respect, fishing. It's all about that quiet, mutual respect. And that's nice, but when you get two boys rooted up on liquid super juice, composed emotional support is probably needed. And masculinity does not want that. Men aren't weak like that. Men can handle that on their own. This isn't a pussy party, let's go laser a guy and shove a hamster up Homelander's ass! Temp V is more than just a metaphor, and also engages with masculinity in a much more linear way. It allows Huey and Butcher to give in to the man way of working through their trauma and insecurities. Yeah man, go punch A-Train. Go burn Homelander and all of the other soups nearby, they deserve it. The use of Temp V, the gaining of that incredible power, immediately fucks up every relationship for both Huey and Butcher. It enables destructive tendencies, inflames insecurity, and is just too much damn power to have over another person. And that is a great metaphor for masculinity. The other missing masculine piece of Butcher is vengeance. And guess what? We can't properly talk about that without talking about another pivotal character. Homelander is an allegory. He's an allegory for a lot. The poster child of modern superheroes and Vought. The doer of so many awful things that it's barely possible to count. I mean, he is the boys. But I'm gonna focus on a few specific things. Obviously, him as a metaphor for masculinity, how his characteristics interact with masculinity, and also the things that he has done to directly affect other characters. We'll start off with what he is. Homelander is evil Superman, immature Superman, Superman in the wrong hands, Ubermensch, Nazi enabler, white supremacy, patriarchy. The show uses Homelander to express the harmful effects of harmful systems and ideologies. Homelander is a character less about what he does and more about how he affects others and the few times that others can affect him. He is the strongest superhero, even among other superheroes. He was grown in a lab to do so. And all of this incredible power has created an immature, insecure shell of a man who preys on the weaknesses of people who he wants to save and make love him. As an allegory of masculinity itself, he is the Ubermensch. You know how I said before that no man is a real man? Well, I lied. Homelander is! Homelander is the unrealistic expectations for men. He is strong, capable, has accumulated fame, wealth, power, a seat at the top, and he is fucking miserable. Even atop this mountain of power, more masculine energy than is possible for any human, and he still has emotional weaknesses. He still wants a family. He still wants to be loved. Being loved is something that he never really genuinely had. He grew up in a lab. He was engineered to be the ultimate superhuman. He never had a family, and he was never genuinely loved by anyone. To create the ultimate man, one who somehow meets the impossible standards we set, they had to sacrifice everything else. And even when this engineered superhuman somehow meets all the masculine expectations put in front of him, he is still unhappy. Because attaining masculinity in its pure form doesn't make you happy. It sets an impossible goal to run to and berates you whenever you happen to fall or, God forbid, go off course. When Homelander admits to himself that he does want the people to love him, his response is to call himself Dirty, shriveled, anemic little part of you that still mules for approval and love and a mommy and a daddy and a boo-woo-woo. And that's why Homelander's missing piece of masculinity is emotion. He has fucking everything that masculinity can give, and he still cries. He still wants a team, a family, 
but because the only way he has ever interacted with the world is through this lens of ultimate power, of being on the Punisher end of the power dynamic, he is never able to connect with anyone in a meaningful way. But there's more to this power than just not being able to fill the bottomless holes that are our egos and insecurities. That power does come with some benefits, those being you get to fuck over everyone else around you and nobody can challenge you. Homelander's crimes are all of them, but the one that matters to me is what he did to Butcher's wife. Because that brings us to the end of a detour of a detour, and we can talk about Butcher's missing piece of revenge. Butcher's revenge piece is a little unique, because it's less about a masculine piece that Butcher is missing, and more just like an actively terrible thing brought on by abused power and stubborn, petty, grudgeful masculinity. Butcher's wife was raped by Homelander, and Ryan, this is Ryan by the way, is the unfortunate result of that event. Season 2 was all about the kid, and the struggle to keep him from Homelander. But now, Ryan provides as this weird bridge between these two characters. Neither of them are great fathers for Ryan. I mean, one's worse than the other, but a rock and a hard place. Butcher obviously wants to be a better father than his dad, but as he falls back into his story and uses Temp V, he forces himself away from Ryan, for both of their sakes, so that Ryan is as far away from the boys as possible, and so Butcher can continue being Butcher. Again, the story of Butcher is ultimately a story of revenge. Revenge against a man and a system that took everything from him. But like everything else, that gets twisted a bit in Season 3. We see it happen in two ways. First, as we talked about, Butcher takes Temp V, and suddenly he has all the power and freedom to do to anyone what Homelander did to him. But also, Homelander just straight up talks to Butcher. They have a nice windowside chat over tea. They talk about Ryan, and importantly, they find common ground about how they have to give up so much just to keep things the same, how they feel as if they're being used by people who think they're above them. We see Butcher, if only for a second, relate to the man who he has been vehemently chasing for the past two seasons. And it is masculine urges that pull these two together. The want to keep things simple and just fight and win and kill without all of the politics between, and the urge to just be free without all the protections and guardrails keeping weak people safe. Homelander's infinite superiority complex and Butcher's infinite stomach for cruelty and violence start to blend here, and while Butcher resists it because, obviously, Homelander, in this conversation, still manages to plant a seed there. A seed of discomfort. A seed of unease in Butcher. So, even with these twists, Butcher carries on in his pursuit for Homelander, determined to find retribution for what has been done to him. As always, the seed that Homelander has planted and the Temp V in his veins only ramp up Butcher's harshness to everyone around him. His revenge story is not what has been tampered with here. The barriers between Butcher and Homelander have been brought down, and now Butcher can manipulate and strongarm and absolutely fuck over everyone in his way. The few relationships that kept him in check are being burnt and cut into by his laser eyes. And again, that is a great metaphor for masculinity. And as if we're back in Season 1, Butcher has dragged Huey into his revenge story. These two have sought out to take down Homelander, and as a result, they've unleashed a bit of a beast. Through this whole video, I've set up pillars and put together lost pieces of everyone's masculinity, and I've set up all of this in order to piece them together here. Everything here fits squarely into the embodiment of traditional masculinity. Just soldier boy! Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's fly. DJ spinning, I said my, my. Soldier Boy is an old guy from World War II. Again, the embodiment of traditional masculinity. Remember how I said Homelander was a real man? Well, I lied again. Soldier Boy is the real man. Soldier Boy is strong, tough, 
intimidating. He doesn't give a shit about trauma or get emotional, ever, because he's not a pussy. And he's in this story for revenge in order to regain the control in his life and the validation that he never got from his father. Soldier Boy is the inverse side of every masculinity piece I've talked about. He's the perfect shining pearl of masculinity on the outside, but on the inside, he is the masculine weaknesses and aspirations of every man in this show. He is an utterly broken man, masquerading as a symbol of perfection, and he is by far the least prepared to deal with them. Like Homelander, Soldier Boy is the unrealistic expectations for men, the physical manifestation of it, and all of the effects that come with that. You thought Homelander was bad? I mean, he is, but Soldier Boy has what Homelander wishes he always had, and he's even fucking worse! Where Homelander kills and jeers and influences, it's for a goal, for a company, for the warped aspiration of a family. Soldier Boy does it for revenge against a team who hated his gruesome abuse so much that they gave him to the Russians to be tortured. Soldier Boy has been at the top of the masculinity superpower dynamic for pretty much his whole life, and he has abused it thoroughly. What he wants is given, and what is not given is almost always easily taken. He abuses the shit out of his team, stars in movies as a terrible actor, has sex with anyone he chooses, anyone he chooses, but even though he gets whatever he wants, whatever he wants isn't enough. Giving in to these masculine urges and completing these masculine goals makes you even more unstable, because the whole time masculinity is telling you to never deal with your trauma, you've sacrificed so much to get to the top of that hierarchy that when you inevitably get unsatisfied, you don't know where to go. His PTSD in the present is so terrible and bottled up that the sound of a Russian song ends with a massacre. Twice. This is again where we are shown that even when attaining the goal of masculinity and power, Soldier Boy is still the same unstable man who never got validation from his dad. Soldier Boy did not meet the expectations of his father. As a kid, he never found the motivation to try and was labeled a disappointment. His relationship with his dad is not necessarily traumatic, but his father still built a world for Soldier Boy to live in. One where, no matter what Soldier Boy does, he is a disappointment. In this world, his father showed him that violence is a perfectly acceptable answer to get what you want, especially if you have the power to do it. But even when Soldier Boy got the power his dad had set as his goal, it wasn't enough. His father never approved of him. The expectations were always larger, the goalposts always just out of reach for Soldier Boy. And I know I'm kind of painting Soldier Boy as the victim here, but if we're being honest, Soldier Boy's father was right. More than anything, Soldier Boy deep down is afraid. He has strength, there's no doubt in his mind about that. But what he's really afraid of is if anyone will ever see any weaknesses in him. He's afraid of others around him moving up. He's afraid of losing that death grip on control that he's had for so long. And well, he was right to fear that. He ended up given to the Ivans by his team, replaced by a lab-grown version of himself. And now, thanks to these two, this absolute amalgamation of negative traits is out and about. And the only way for him to deal with all this shit inside of him is to go on this revenge killing spree. All of this comes to a head when Homelander and Soldier Boy face off in the end. We're skipping over some, but honestly this video is long enough. At this point, both the viewer and the characters do not know if Homelander and Soldier Boy are actually gonna fight. It was just revealed to everyone that Homelander is Soldier Boy's son. This is euphoric news for Homelander. Now, not only does he have Ryan, oh yeah, he has he has Ryan now, he also has Soldier Boy as family. He sees this as his out, away from all the pains in his life. He can finally have the father he always wanted in Soldier Boy. But Soldier Boy has a different idea of 
fatherhood. Never laid a hand on me. He couldn't be bothered. He said I was a disappointment. Soldier Boy sees his blood son, a man with as much power as himself. This could very well be another chance at family for Soldier Boy. But looking at Homelander, he sees weakness. He sees emotion. He sees the worst parts of himself. He sees that nothing's changed, and this is where he finally realizes that his father was right. He is a fucking, fucking disappointment. disappointment. And that is where most people end their analysis on Soldier Boy. But I think there's more. Soldier Boy isn't just thinking, oh my god, he's just like me for real. I should fucking kill him. At this point, Soldier Boy has nothing. No emotional connection to the world. Everyone he loved and everyone he thought loved him is dead, mostly by his hands. He is emotionally detached from everything. All he has to fall back on are his powers and the ideology stemming from it. When Soldier Boy sees himself in Homelander, he doesn't think about connection or emotions or the future. All he can think about is his own trauma and the strength that he doesn't see in Homelander, because that is what he was fucking taught to do. Disappoint, 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 disappointment. Uh, Butcher, he is initially elated by Soldier Boy's sudden realization, but then something important is threatened. Ryan, the kid, is threatened, and Butcher cannot do nothing. These two start working together. These two enemies, opposites, are working towards the same goal because they finally realize what Soldier Boy didn't. Ryan, the kid, the next guy, is just more important than this. Ryan, this season, has been this weird bridge between Butcher and Homelander, and the weird bridge is finally crossed. Homelander, at this point, is just protecting what little territory he has left, but Butcher, Butcher realizes that the protection of the next generation is so much more important than the story that he's been building. Everything that Butcher has been building up to, all of it, has been for this moment. And here, at the last second, he finally finds something sacred. Something to keep out of the fight at all costs. Butcher ends up fighting Soldier Boy for his son rejecting his revenge story and all the masculine crap that comes with it to protect what is sacred to him and his wife. But Soldier Boy has no connection to this world. He doesn't have a Ryan, he doesn't have a Huey. All he knows at this point are his superpowers. All he knows is toxic masculinity. The reason I haven't used that particular phrase this whole time is because I just have trouble defining it. But now, with this, I feel like I can. Both Butcher and Homelander reject it. Not entirely, but they do reject it. Because Soldier Boy just showed them, and me, what it really is. Toxic masculinity is never living up to your father, and never letting your son live up to you. Alright, that should be the end, right? Um, holy shit, wait, Huey, oh my, Huey, wait, wait, we never finished Huey? What the fuck? Huey, Huey, uh, okay, so, Huey, okay, uh, we talked before about how Huey's relationships with the healthy people in his life were disrupted, either by force or him choosing to walk away from them, and he does all this because he, as a result of the head popper, is reliving all of his trauma, and things that minorly bugged him in the past are now the focal point of his struggles, and his solution to all this is taking Temp V, and living with the power that Temp V gave him was was cathartic as fuck at first, but now he has to bore witness to not only what that power is capable of physically doing, but also what that power can manifest as in the user. Someone like A-Train is equal parts evil as he is tragic, because the power that he's been given has demanded that he be disconnected from any and all of the deep relationships in his life. 
It turned him into someone who doesn't know how to handle hardship that isn't solved by superpowers and relies on the cheap rush of power and drugs and drugs that give you powers to live and feel anything. So anyway, Huey's unhealthy relationship with Butcher comes to a head when Butcher saves Huey by... What? ...not allowing him to take any more Temp V, as any more Temp V would certainly send Huey six feet in the dirt. Honestly, that knockout is a good metaphor for their whole dynamic. Butcher ends their relationship of deception and moral bankruptcy by knocking Huey the fuck out without telling him anything, still physically demonstrating that he will continue his destructive behavior, but he knows enough and cares enough to know that nobody else should go with him. Huey's lessons on how to not handle his trauma are handily shown to him by Soldier Boy. Through Soldier Boy, Huey sees firsthand that the pursuit for impossible standards will always come up short and leave you as a more disconnected and sadder person. I mean, like I said, Soldier Boy has nothing. And this to Huey serves as a contrast to how, even at Huey's lowest, he still had people who cared about him. Huey has a dad that we somehow haven't talked about. Jesus. So, Huey's relationship with his dad is not the best. Since the beginning, there has been tension between these two. Huey's dad is not at all willing to fight Vought, because he's justifiably terrified of fighting superheroes and just generally wants things to stay the same. While Huey wants the exact opposite, Huey sees all of the worst parts of himself in his dad or as a result of his dad for the longest time. But Huey's time with Temp V, his time fighting with power alongside the embodiment of it, showed him how his dad was not weak. Huey's dad is a coward, but I mean, he was there for Huey. Even when both Huey and himself had nothing left, his dad was there. And that is a kind of strength that you can't get with Temp V. Huey can now, finally, live up to his father.